You always understood what Washington, D.C. did not. Our movement is a movement built on love. It's love for fellow citizens. It's love for struggling Americans who've been left behind and love for every American child who deserves a chance to have all of their dreams come true. From the inner cities to the rural outposts, from the Sun Belt to the Rust Belt, from east to west and north to south, our movement is built on the conviction that every American from every background is entitled to a government that puts their needs first. We believe that every American has the right to live with dignity. Respect for America demands respect for all of its people. Loyalty to our nation requires loyalty to each other. We all share the same home, the same dreams, and the same hopes for a better future. A wound inflicted upon one member of our community is a wound inflicted upon us all. When one part of America hurts, we all hurt. And when one American suffers an injustice, all of America suffers together. We're all together. We want every child to succeed, every community to prosper, and every struggling American to have a chance for a better life. What happened in Charlottesville strikes at the core of America. And tonight, this entire arena stands united in forceful condemnation of the thugs who perpetrate hatred and violence. But the very dishonest media, those people right up there with all the cameras, and I mean truly dishonest people in the media and the fake media, they make up stories, they have no sources in many cases, they say a source says there is no such thing, but they don't report the facts. Just like they don't want to report that I spoke out forcefully against hatred, bigotry, and violence, and strongly condemned the neo-Nazis, the white supremacists, and the KKK. I openly called for unity, healing, and love. And they know it because they were all there. So what I did, so what I did is I thought I'd take just a second, and I'm really doing this more than anything else, because you know where my heart is, OK? I'm really doing this to show you how damn dishonest these people are. And most of you know this anyway. So here's what I said really fast. Here's what I said on Saturday. We're closely following the terrible events unfolding in Charlottesville, Virginia. This is me speaking. We condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence. That's me speaking on Saturday. Right after the event. So I'm condemning the strongest possible terms, egregious display, hatred, bigotry, and violence. Okay, I think you can't do much better, right? It has no place in America. What is vital now is a swift restoration of law and order and the protection of innocent lives. No citizen should ever fear for their safety, security in our society, and no child should ever be afraid to go outside and play or be with their parents and have a good time. This is me speaking. Here's further. This is on Saturday, the first one. I did this three times. We have to come together as Americans with love for the nation and true affection. Really, and I say this so strongly, true affection for each other. I didn't say true affection for you and you. I said for each other, all of us, all of us, all of us. But they don't report it. 
They don't, they just let it go. Above all else, we must remember this truth, no matter our color, creed, religion, or political party, we are all Americans first. We love our country. We love our God. We love our flag. So now, I say we have to heal our wounds and the wounds of our country. I love the people of our country, the people, all of the people. It says, I love all of the people of our country. I didn't say I love you because you're black, or I love you because you're white, or I love you because you're from Japan, or you're from China, or you're from Kenya, or you're from Scotland or Sweden. I love all the people of our country. We're going to make America great again, but we're going to make it great for all of the people of the United States of America. And then they say, is he a racist? Is he a racist? Then I did a second one. So then I did a second one. Don't bother, it's only a single voice and not a very powerful voice. How did he get in here? He's supposed to be with a few people outside. How about, how about all week they're talking about the massive crowds that are going to be outside. Where are they? Well, it's hot out. It is hot. I, I think it's too warm. You know, they show up in the helmets and the black masks, and they've got clubs and they've got everything. Antifa! So on August the 14th, so that was it. And I said, all people, I love all people, everything, right? Now I figure, I'm going to do it again. I'll be even more specific. So I said, based on the events that took place over the last weekend in Charlottesville, I'd like to provide the nation with an update, because that was right after the event, the first one, right? An update on ongoing federal response to the horrific attack and violence that was witnessed by everybody. To anyone who acted criminally in this weekend's racist violence, you will be held fully accountable. Justice will be delivered. That's what I said. Listen to that. I said that, but they don't show that. They don't show it. They talk, they'll take one thing like, seriously, he was late was the best thing. He was late. So I said, to anyone who acted criminally in this weekend's racist violence, okay. Then I go, we must love each other, show affection for each other, and unite together in condemnation of hatred, bigotry, and violence. We must rediscover the bonds of love and loyalty that bring us together as Americans, right? Then I said, racism is evil. Did they report that I said that racism is evil? You know why? Because they are very dishonest people. So I said, racism is evil. Now, they only choose, you know, like a half a sentence here or there, and then they just go on this long rampage, or they put on these real lightweights all around a table that nobody ever heard of, and they all say, what a bad guy I am. And those who cause violence in its name are criminals and thugs, including the KKK, neo-Nazis, white supremacists, and other hate groups that are repugnant to everything we hold true as Americans. Now, let me ask you, can it be any better than that in all fairness? And you know, I mentioned that, but to the best of my knowledge, when there was a big problem, Barack Obama never said it took place because of radical Islamic terrorists. He never said that, right? He doesn't have to say. You know why? Because they have a double standard, because the media is totally dishonest, and they have a double standard. You've never heard them say that. And in fact, if you use the term, you get criticized. But with me, they wanted me to say it. I said it. 
And I said it very clearly, but they refused to put it on. Those who spread violence in the name of bigotry strike the very core of America. These are my words. This was on Monday, August the 14th. So you had Saturday, you had Monday. I mean, I was going to do one of these every week, but you would never get it right. In times such as these, America has always shown its true character, responding to hate with love, division with unity, and violence with an unwavering resolve for justice. Then I finished. I said, we will defend and protect the sacred rights of all Americans. All is capitalized times five. Not just you. And we will work together so that every citizen, every citizen, in this blessed land is free to follow their dreams and their hearts and to express the love and joy in their souls. Okay, now, I mean, so, so, they were having a hard time with that one because I said everything. I hit them with neo-Nazi. I hit them with everything. I, I got the white supremacists, the neo-Nazi, I got them all in there, let's see. Yeah. KKK, we have KKK. I got them all. So they're having a hard time. So what did they say, right? It should have been sooner. He's a racist. It should have been sooner. Okay. So it should have been. So then, the last one, on Tuesday. Tuesday, I did another one. We condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence. It has no place in America. But they also said that he must be a racist because he never mentioned the driver of the car, who is a terrible person, drove the car, and he killed Heather. And it's a terrible thing. But they said I didn't mention. So these are my words. The driver of the car is a murderer. And what he did was a horrible, inexcusable thing. So the point is, and I didn't want to bore you because you understand where I'm coming from. You people understand. But the point is that those were three different. There were two statements and one news conference. The words were perfect. They only take out anything they can think of. And for the most part, all they do is complain. But they don't put on those words. And they don't put on me saying those words. The media can attack me. But where I draw the line is when they attack you, which is what they do. When they attack the decency of our supporters. You're taxpaying Americans who love our nation, obey our laws, and care for our people. It's time to expose the crooked media deceptions and to challenge the media for their role in fomenting divisions. These are truly dishonest people. And not all of them. Not all of them. You have some very good reporters. You have some very fair journalists. But for the most part, honestly, these are really, really dishonest people. And they're bad people. And I really think they don't like our country. I really believe that. And I don't believe they're going to change, and that's why I do this. If they would change, I would never say it. The only people giving a platform to these hate groups is the media itself and the fake news. If you want to discover the source of the division in our country, look no further than the fake news and the crooked media. which would rather get ratings and clicks than tell the truth. Americans share one flag, one home, and one glorious destiny. We live according to the same law, raise our children by the same values, and we are all made by the same almighty God. As long as we remember these truths, as long as we have enough strength and courage in our souls, then there is no challenge too great, no task too large, no dream beyond our reach. 
We are Americans, and the future belongs to us. The future belongs to all of you. This is our moment. This is our chance. This is our opportunity to recapture our dynasty like never before, to rebuild our future, to deliver justice for every forgotten man and woman and child in America. Freedom will prevail. Our values will endure. Our citizens will prosper. Arizona will thrive. And our beloved nation will succeed like never, ever before. So to Americans, young and old, near and far, in cities small and large, we say these words again tonight. We will make America strong again. We will make America wealthy again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you, Arizona. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, what do you say to that? I'm just going to speak from the heart here. What we have witnessed was a total eclipse of the facts. Someone who came out on stage and lied directly to the American people and left things out that he said in an attempt to rewrite history, especially when it comes to Charlottesville. He's unhinged. It's embarrassing. And I don't mean for us, the media, because he went after us, but for the country. This is who we elected president of the United States. A man who is so pit petty that he has to go after people who he deems to be his enemy, like an imaginary friend of a six-year-old. His speech was without thought. It was without reason. It was devoid of facts. It was devoid of wisdom. There was no gravitas. There was no sanity there. He was like a child blaming a sibling on something else. He did it. I didn't do it. He certainly opened up the race wound from Charlottesville. A man clearly wounded by the rational people who are abandoning him in droves, meaning those business people and the people in Washington now who are questioning his fitness for office and whether he is stable. A man backed into a corner, it seems, by circumstances beyond his control and beyond his understanding. That's the truth. If you watch that speech as an American, you had to be thinking, what in the world is going on? This is the person we elected as a president of the United States? This petty? This small? The person who's supposed to pull the country together? Certainly didn't happen there.